Good morning, Santa Barbara Teen Sports listeners. I am your host, Erica Salda, the Queen of Teen at KZSB AM 1290. We welcome you all to join us every single Tuesday at 9 a.m. right after the news. This is a whole hour of Santa Barbara Teen Athletes and all the people and all the beautiful businesses that support those athletes. That said... My crew is in the house. You got a Doc- big crew. We got, we got the best crew. Wow. All right? That's what I got to say. Dr. D, what's today's uh, date? Oh, hi. You know, I never come prepared. I don't even know what We have today. reached, <clears throat> in essence, the halfway point oh, in July. Really? It's the 15th. It's the 15th. Isn't that special? Wow. I that's guess, I think special. that's like a, we're in a new moon or something. Isn't it? I know, yes, like new it moon. could gotta, be. Could be. Yeah, it moon. could be. You, you don't betcha. know. Hey, we have a present for you. Oh, what's that? Okay, we, this is the, we, we collaborated because, you know, we're always talking about, you know, you're slightly soccer ball and I apparently um, coach Dominique was uh, taking a walk with her friend and uh, just have by happenstance just stumbled upon this ball because she was out by UCSB and she just <laughs> felt it was <laughs> just <laughs> slightly used you know nice oh, right wait course, until you like it he gets a hold of this I take a picture of that <laughs> oh this is nice huh I didn't know because you know we just like to recycle you like it that's that's great you think it's cool I mean it's this is is as uh, good as it's ever going to look from this point exactly. forward. I just think, this oh, is we'll as good as it's going to get. I'll get the UCSB because I'm not really sure it came from there. But, you know, as it was in the general vicinity, so I just put UCSB. I see, I see. <laughs> you like it? That's very good. Thank you. I see, it's thank kind you. of worn. It's and, nice. And Angus and Bridget, thank you. No, oh, you're welcome. Makushla doesn't play much with anything. She's in the, at that age where she's just on patrol. Oh, that's so funny because I was like, you know, checking out like my dietary, what I can and cannot eat the next day. So <laughs> I was... Uh, cannot eat a it. soccer ball. No, yeah. you can't. And all of a sudden, no. it's like no. soccer ball no. like flies through the air, and she goes, "Oh, she's, she's so cute!" And we have Coach Dominique to your left, and then I, I'll let you tell the story. I don't know. Hello, You're walking with Erica. Oh, good morning. <laughs> How are you? I lost another four pounds. Oh, you're awesome. I don't know. You know what the key is to working with you is for like months and months and months, for like six, seven months, I've been like working out and I go to the pool, I go over to Vista and I love the Vista and I love the gals over there. So it's funny, it wasn't until like maybe two weeks ago you identified before I went to the pool, she's like, Erica, like what do you eat before I go to the pool? I'm like, nothing. And she goes, you know, you just, your your body is going into starvation mode because I'm like, why am I swimming and swimming and swimming? So all I've really done is to eat a little bit before I go and now it's just going room. it just fl- it's melting nice. I'm melting nice it's like somebody put like I had that broomstick and somebody dumped a bucket of water on me you know what I mean I was like ah no <laughs> I'm no? down to 187 and I've only been sitting next to her I haven't See, even it's, it's, the it's the energy it's the energy so it's just this really kind of thing I mean it's really honestly I mean you really do have to eat to lose weight yes you know especially before you work out you gotta eat and I just I don't know why they never like plugged into me I don't know I'm yeah and I w- I'm not yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well you don't have to lose weight I'm losing weight I yeah. know because you you're talking about it I right? know there you go that's all it yeah. is yeah people don't realize also uh, drinking coffee can kind of mess up your quit not that. losing you weight quit that too quit yeah. that too yeah. I don't yeah. like correct information I don't like correct information <laughs> I want to stay quit with that. my coffee uh, no, no more coffee oh the more. reason for it is there's this dance between the caffeine and the coffee and your cortisol level so when your cortisol level is high, your body thinks you're stressed out. And so your body's going to look out for you by keeping the weight on. Right. Because you never know. You might get chased by a saber-toothed tiger. <laughs> That's what, It's true. In Santa Barbara, there's a few. That's right. Let me you tell you. Know. Straight up. Or I could just get rid of the cortisol. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that too. Go. With meditation. <laughs> there you go. See? <laughs> All the way around. So eating, eating loses weight. So the three blenders I have a day, we're good? We're good with that? <laughs> Good with all that? We can talk. Okay, we can we'll talk. talk. Oh. It's not Coach working. Dave! Yes, Erica, how are I you? I miss you. I am so fired. You miss me? Yes. It's been a whole week. I know. I know. And then we I emailed this morning. You. you know, I do. You're nervous? I check out, you know, I'll be honest with you. I, I've like totally cut down Facebook like 90%. But when I do go there, I really do look for your little morning stuff. Monday, Tuesday through Friday mantra. Because, yeah. you know, I really don't want to go to the pool. Right. So there's always something there that I can find that you've posted, you know, to like smack me. You got to like, be smacked. I, I don't need to be, you gotta smacked. be smacked. Coach you, Dane, you, I need to be smacked. You need to, come here. Yeah, no. <laughs> we, we're up to 12 seconds on the hug. Let's it, not push it. <laughs> that's push huge. The hug. It's a 20 that's second huge. hug. We're up to 12. We started with five. Yeah. Seven, nine, 12. We're up to 12 now. May, and I, May and I are at like 50. Uh, oh, 50. 
Oh, we're going to get to her. Oh, yes. Oh, my foot doctor. I mean, I'm just surrounded Hello. with love. Hey. <laughs> hey, Dr. Chandler. I brought the tape measure. You brought the tape measure? Because she has to measure me because of my Achilles. So she's putting brace on me. So if you have any foot problems out there, Dr. Chandler is the only doctor to go to. Okay, that's all I'm going to say about you. Well, thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you welcome. very much. No, it's really nice. Thank you so much for bringing my little book and fixing my foot like you have. I really appreciate it. How you doing? Pretty good. And your you? husband passed the bar. Put you your hands together. Your husband passed the bar. <laughs> now you don't have to work anymore. You're done. Yeah, well, you're done. Now, now he has to find a job. Oh, okay. Thing. So yeah. you know that's oh. the second step. But oh. I'm getting there. I'm getting closer and closer to retirement. Oh, there the you go. Maybe 32. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but you go to a lot of weddings. I Facebook you. I stalk you on Facebook. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> no, I, I do. Just, you. You're always in a wedding. You, you're no. very photogenic too. Was, well, that was airbrush. Oh. <laughs> The airbrush. That <laughs> yeah. cost a fortune. Oh, yeah. First time ever to airbrush. Yeah. Oh. And I was shocked how much it cost. Really? It doesn't look that good up front. So your whole crew is either. getting married now, right? Is that what it is? Like, yeah, you know, the yeah. friends are starting to get married yeah. and have their kids cool. and yeah. stuff like that. I guess we're cool. in that age group. Yeah. It's funny because when we, um, our generation, okay, Dominique, Wen, and I, like, we got, had, you got, kind of pretty much got married because there was no living together. I mean, that would make you like that kind of girl, okay? So you get married. <laughs> and then, um, you know, I waited, you know, until I had, you know, this, this, that, and this. And then um, 30 came. And I'm like, hmm, okay, I'm nothing. I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm no. everything. No, but you know what I mean? So I'm like, okay, we'll try. And then, of course, I guess I was fertile. So, and then I had my kids <laughs> in my 30s, because obviously, you know, because I do everything perfect. Um, so your generation, because like you're in your 30s. Yes. So like, do you find your friends not having kids right away or not getting married or having kids without getting married? Like, what is the well, scene? What's going on? Most of my to- friends aren't married yet. Okay. But um, they're living together. Yeah, they're living together. Okay, a lot cool. of them have boyfriends and they live together. Okay. And then I, my one really close friend, she has three kids under okay. the age of two. Right. But she is very married? unique. Yeah, married. Uh, it's funny how you got to ask. You see, back in yeah. our generation, you never, you wouldn't even think to say married. Of course, you. How would they would never have a child out of wedlock. You know what I mean? <laughs> now it's like, no, we'll get, we're not getting married. Okay. <laughs> I mean, is this some new tax structure that I'm not aware of? You know what I mean? I didn't understand yeah. that. So that's cool. Cool. Yeah, it's fun. You're it's not going to have any kids fun. right away, though, right? No. We've no. been married. Well, it'll be five years next oh, wow. next month. Wow. And no, no so kids. So you have 80% chance soon. of making it 10. I don't know if you know the statistics. 80%? Yeah, to make it at 10. Oh, Isn't that yeah. nice? I know. I've already beat my parents I at know. five. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Serious? <laughs> That's funny. It's <laughs> not that That's, funny. Is it, is that it that still is the seven <laughs> year? <laughs> is it it's still, do we still have the seven year itch? Is yeah. it like, is that expanded? I think it's the seven month itch. But you got your parents like the divorced married couple like I was. Like we were still we're we're divorced, but like we we do things. Oh, yeah. like the family's like way tight. Mm, so. Not no? so much. No. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. I hate you. Not so much. <laughs> okay. Look how perfect you turned out. Thanks. Aww. Yeah. See? See? They had one, and then I guess they yeah, were just so you done. Were the love child. <laughs> there you go. I was the love child. There you are. All right. All right. That's enough information right now. Okay. Yeah. At me. Okay. We're gonna go. There to we go. Coach Gill, how you doing? Woo! You look. You looking beautiful, you Erica. I do. Don't I? Yes. I had to Andy Brown. That's who does my hair. Montecito. Andy Brown? Uh-huh. I uh, love her. Don't. She's really good. She does guys' hairs, too. Really? Uh, you'd be a lot cheaper than what I did. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have my guy. I have my guy. I'm not uh, do you? Oh, I got my guy. Okay. <laughs> well, he said I have my guy. I got a flip. Oh, okay. That's all right. Speaking of weddings, though, I got uh, Friday, Saturday, mm. and then Sunday I depart for Hawaii. Woo. Cool. Ooh, so I'm excited about this week. You're not getting married. <laughs> No, 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 no. Oh, I was no, going to no. say. <laughs> no, 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 really? No. I missed the team meeting. No. So my, my mom, speaking of, speaking of you, um, very mm-hmm. traditional in the sense like, all right, she got married young. Mm-hmm. She had me relatively young and she's asking me for grandparents, grandkids already. Aww. And I'm like, all right, yeah, I do have a girlfriend, but yeah. <laughs> not yet. Yeah. <laughs> you, but you got to do the married thing, right? Absolutely. Yeah, you got to yeah. do the Catholic, the whole thing, right? She's very Catholic. Good. That's yes. it. You got to make mommy happy. Yes, yes, You got to yes. be the mommy's boy. I am. <laughs> okay, good. All right. But yeah. Queen wants to see that. <laughs> no, this was sick. All right, so who'd you bring today? You brought somebody today. Today I brought Ben Clay. Um, he's a big boy. Big boy. He is yeah. a big boy. Six yeah. five, two fifty. Wow. Um, incoming junior. Nice. Um, played varsity last year as a sophomore. Wow. And uh, this is the year for him to really shine. Um, and if he doesn't, 
we're gonna struggle yeah. so he he needs to shine oh that's cute <laughs> and he's yeah. a member of the chess club right yeah exactly i sure hope so at 250 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah yeah he's a good kid though good uh, kid um, all right and coach jade yes. who else we got we have also uh, mike wilson he's a sports psychology consultant nice so this is gonna be fun we're gonna talk some shop this is gonna be fun nice yeah. uh, that's right up my besties alley here wendy foster how you doing wendy i'm good yeah so, you know, I'm still healing from my knee thing. Yes, So Wendy. speaking of weight, if yeah. you really want to lose weight, uh. turn on the Discovery Channel uh. on a Sunday night. Ongoing. It's called Naked and Afraid. Mm. Have you seen that? Uh, no. <laughs> it's I'd be afraid. It's freaking believable. I would be afraid. They do. <laughs> what, what the producers they, did is they created an Adam and Eve, and they're sending these couples off uh, to sure. random yeah. couples to uh. Cambodia and Africa and naked? Belize. Yes. Fuck yes, naked. Off. Stop. And naked. talk about weight loss in 21 days, and they yeah. got to just make it. Really? And it's their story. And you can see them naked. Uh, well, they kind of blur it a little oh, bit, really? but you could see they're but losing you, weight over yeah. 21 days. But yeah. honestly, that can't be healthy. you know, if you right. want to see visually what happens and how spoiled we are in America, right. because they're all like kind of American gladiator. We had Heather Bond on last week, but mm-hmm. they're all like Heather. Like they're mm-hmm. like, go, I can take down any 21 days. Right. And within a few days, right. they're like, I'm starving. <laughs> if I get bit one more time, oh. you know, if I stop get talking bit to me like time, that, I'm hungry. I'd be I'm, like, yeah. where's my Achilles brace? Oh, you got to watch it. <laughs> Honestly. I get, no, I get. No, I exactly. I get to take one item, one my item. Achilles brace. <laughs> That's it. That's all I need. All right. All right. I'm looking at Dr. D. He's looking at me. He's smushy side me for about two and a half minutes now. All right. Um, we've got a lot to talk about. We've got some great guests. Stay tuned. This is Eric Saul, the Queen of Teen. We'll be back with more after these messages. We are back, and this is the Santa Barbara Teen Sports Radio Show. I am your host, Erica Salda, the Queen of Teen. Please tune in every single Tuesday at 9 a.m. right after the news. I am got a couple of announcements to make. One, I'm so happy and excited. We have uh, Hearts Adaptive has linked to our We Care Crusade. So let's put our hands together yeah. for Hearts Adaptive. That's right. It's a great organization. Uh, actually, I got to say, Wendy Foster introduced me to them about 10, 12, 14 years ago. Was that a profound experience? That was amazing. We'll, I just we'll talk about you it. out of the house. And I know. I was just like, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. And then all of a sudden, three hours later, I didn't have a TV because I donated my brand new TV. So this is what happens with me. Okay? Seriously. So they had this ribbon cutting, right? Mm-hmm. They had this tack room, and the tack room was so nice, and they had everybody was there, the mayor, you know, and, and what it was for me, it was like this girl that had like three or four people help put on the horse, and the only thing that she can move, swear, is like one little finger. So what her dad did is built this audio box, you know, and be an audio person, and, and he mounted it on the horse, and they all these people helped her on the horse, and she can't literally, she's paralyzed, except for the one little finger. So she pushes this little button, and the box says forward or move or what. Yeah, it was like green, like green and red. Yeah, and, and it, it just said, like, and it basically told, because of one little finger movement, the horse just basically did it, and we were all in If you tears. didn't have sunglasses on, uh, We all had sunglasses on. I was so like, like, I was like, just... I was a puddle. And I, I mean, remember, if look, everybody's just more concerned about where is the Kleenex, right? <laughs> so we went to this tax room. I'm like, God, nobody videoed this. Nobody, you know, there's no gift basket. Like, what can we do to help or anything like that? So I'm like, I happen to just win this TV when he knows. And I'm like, you know, I don't need this TV. I have so many TVs. So I just, I had to do something. So basically, somebody was videoing something. I said, look, we need to show this. So we just, we just, you know, gave away the TV. And it was awesome. And I love this. And I'm so excited. And you know the director over there really well. Kirby. Yes. Yeah, we love Kirby. Yes. And, you know, so now they're hooked up. So, and I, and I, the two days after they get hooked up, I get this check in the mail, Eric Asal, to open it up, Parts Adaptive Rider, $100. Woo! Yeah! Woo! Right. Okay, and this is from Joan Calder, and she'll be out next week, so I'm really excited about that. So I needed to share. So, you know, anybody who wants to make um, and get a free business ad, just make a check out to 100 bucks to Hearts Adaptive Riding. Contact my web guy. We will give you a free business ad. And, you know, our site is trafficked. We get between fifty and 70,000 hits a month. 
15, 18, 20, I lost count how many countries are listening. So, you know, do that and it'll make you feel good. Um, I got to go to Dominique right now. She's looking at me. Uh, what's the mantra for the day? I want to do a daily mantra. Oh, what's our weekly wow. mantra? Well, I like your feeling good. I, I think our daily mantra should be about happiness. All right. And I was talking to my kids this weekend about how if you have a habit of waking up in the morning and thinking about three things that you're grateful for, they have proven it with studies that you increase your happiness. Oh. Yeah, so that, every morning. that is every our morning. happiness nice. mantra. Yep. Think of three things that you're grateful for that make you happy. Awesome. If you you could think about it while you're driving to work. It's Absolutely. Morning. Just think about three cool things. Yep. It probably like set your whole day. It could like alter your day. Absolutely. You could have been like cranky, cranky. You know, like I was a little cranky this morning because, you know, John has my American Express and I needed it to put gas in the car and I'm on E and sometimes, you know, my ex-husband thought E stood for enough, but it doesn't. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, like I have like two miles to empty and I don't have my American Express. So I could have, but I didn't think to think of three good things. You know, and then because I couldn't think of anything at the time except for, you know, things that would get me, you know, imprisoned. So basically, I am going to do that from right, right from this point on. And then give us a food tip for the week. Too. A food tip for the week. Uh, well, let's just work on changing coffee to tea. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Gonna, yeah, that's good. E- that's even good. if it's black tea, it's yeah. going to it's going to help you out if you just shift that caffeine level. All right. Give it a change. Change coffee to tea. No. Think of I mean, three yes. things. No. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, yes. And then think one. of three things. I do the PG tips. I do the English, and yet then you throw in two bags of mate. No. Nice. <laughs> South American thing. I have my son on it. Uh. He doesn't drink coffee. He's like, Mom, make me that cool tea drink. Oh. Because it uh, has a lot of... So you brought England and Africa together. I did. I love it. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, our ambassador. Yeah. There you go. Working to bring countries together. <laughs> That's about it. chai? Chai. Oh, chai is really fun. Mm. I like to make chai with almond milk. Yes. Mm. Nice. So real quick, we have one minute before we're going to take another break, but let's talk about the almond milk because my house is filled with, I don't, there's no more milk in my house. So, and kids are all into it. The teens are all into it. Um, I know that parents, if they haven't gotten into it, they're going to get into it. So let's talk about the difference between the milk and the almond milk. Yeah. Well, there are theories that um, we do better with less dairy. And so you're just going to have to experiment with it a little bit. But the nice thing about the almond milk is most people do well with almonds. And so if you get the unsweetened almond milk, then you can decide how much sweetener you're putting in. <laughs> Look at that. Everyone is shaking Chocolate their heads right now. Uh, I, I, only, I recommend the unsweetened only because if you do it for a week, you'll realize, wow, I don't really need as much sugar as I may have been using. Right. So I'm all for people cutting back on that sugar, but going for the real food. And so almond milk is a really good alternative. Dr. Chandler, go ahead. Well, and I heard, too, that there's a difference between the... There's only one type, I guess, of almond milk that you really should get. That's the pure almonds or the non-roasted almonds. So we've started oh. getting the the raw almond right. milk, which is a little more expensive. But a friend of ours told us that there is a difference between, I guess, the roasted almond milk right. and right. then the pure. Yeah. And that bottle that has the non-roasted almond milk is really cute. So oh. <laughs> now, there's a reason to buy. Nice. <laughs> now, nice. I have to. I have to say that I think. You're, you're pushing the envelope a little too much. Look, I just got off of sodas, and I just dropped 99% of dairy out of my diet, mm. and I like the chocolate-flavored almond milk. I find I hate, I do not care for the soy, mm. and I've also heard not real right. great things about soy. Mm. So... Could you just? <laughs> can I stay there? Because you're staying in his box. Uh, I've yeah. given up the, these uh, other two things. Uh, can I stay with it? Stop the stretching him so much. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next next time I'll have to come with some fresh made almond milk that I make with just a little bit of dates. Oh, yeah. I haven't even had that. The thing about fresh almond milk is when you're squeezing the the milk out of the raw almonds that you just blend up in a Vitamix blender, it's creamy. There's actually fat in almonds, and so you get all of that cream. So it, it tastes way different than the milk in the box. Well, we're looking forward to that, so you're committed to that for next Tuesday. Okay. Coffee. Uh, this Coffee. Is, oh, that's it. Yeah, exactly. All right. Mark we're going to take a break. Down. We've got Mike Wilson, and we've got Ben Clay in the choir room, which we're going to be joining after these messages. We are back. 
and this is the Santa Barbara Teen Sports Radio Show. I'm your host, Erica Salda, the Queen of Teen. Please tune in every single Tuesday at 9 a.m. right after the news. And Coach Dan, yes, where else are we? Else are we? <laughs> you like that. <laughs> we are on Twitter, we are on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube at Teen Sports Radio. Dot com. <laughs> <laughs> That's she, what, like, she went like, to almond milk, man. Like, that's drinking her own almond milk. That's what that's about. She's lying about the no coffee. Oh my like, God. That's all she's been doing what is drinking is coffee. What What are you doing over there, oh Coach God. Dane? What the heck is going Coach on? We cannot be predictable. Dominique, what's happening? <laughs> Dominique's usually just calm and smiling. She's lost her mind. I know. She's in between you and I. I don't know. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. I don't know. Who? Yeah. who, who, who Mike that? Wilson's going to freak out right now because he doesn't know what he's up to. How you doing, Mike? I'm just watching the chemistry. I'm I know, right? So Mike Wilson, sports psychology Hands consultant. Mike yes. Wilson. Woo! Yes. All right. There you go. Down. He's, he's like being an uh, orchestra leader here. Up, yeah. down, up, down. He wants to do it again. Mike Wilson, yes. right here. Yes. See, this is what we do. We can do it now. Bring it down. So up and down. Uh, Sorry, I have too much. So Mike, so, so, so talk to us, man. This is, this is our home. Like, we, we, this is sports psychology haven. Oh, that's Beautiful what I host next oh, to you. She's yeah. psychology. I'm psychology. She's just. Erica's psychology all over the place, right? We're all power of the mind. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of nuts, we yeah. all are. Yes, we're yeah. all. This talk to like us. A place to be talk me, to us yeah. about how you got. So you look, you look athletic, right? So talk to us about your your past coming into your company is called Evolving Concepts. Perfect. Talk to us psychology. Perfect. Yeah. Talk to us about how that kind of evolved. Yeah. So well, thanks for having me. First of all, I really appreciate the the um, connection and seeing this group. It's gonna be energetic. I feel already. So for me, I grew up pretty much playing sports right out of the gate. Um, I was doing everything from action sports to you know formal stick and ball sports, but I ended up sticking with soccer and taking that seriously and realizing that that's what I wanted to do professionally. So through my high school years, I played overseas and then played collegiately and eventually started doing um, professional tours with several different clubs. So in that time span, however, I first encountered sports psychology the same year that my collegiate team won the national championship. So right. for me, it was great timing. It, it was great timing, and it just was a perfect fit. And I really wanted to explore this relationship I was experiencing experiencing between mentality and performance. Right. So um, fast forward a couple years, uh, I got my master's in sports psychology from uh, one of the top applied sports psych programs in the U.S. And since then, I've been working with professional athletes all the way down to grassroots and uh, <laughs> grassroots and um, master's levels athletes as Excellent. well. Excellent. Would you say that if an athlete could get the mental aspects of their game down, that they wouldn't need performance enhancing substances in their bodies that mm. they could do it from the mind which is even more powerful than any chemical you can put in there that's that's a really good question it's obviously a very controversial question in the athletic uh landscape i mean you gotta first we gotta take a few steps back and look at what motivates an athlete what's their reason for playing a sport what's their reason for pursuing that as a career and we all have motivations for a lot of different things some of them may be more external some of them you know maybe hey if I do this if I get this many touchdowns a week I get a nice big watch every month so that's a very difficult question to unpack in just one conversation that I have here um, but a lot of it can be adjusted I mean you look at what an athlete practices and what time they put in to perfect their craft. You're looking at technical um, aspects, you're looking at nutritional, uh, ment mental, uh, even technological. So being able to ad adequately calibrate each of those categories, potentially, yeah, that could be a more positive solution. Um, but again, it's, it's a big question in terms of the culture of sports it happens in more sports than others uh different female male populations so there's a there's a lot of um dynamics that go into that so so when an athlete approaches you for you to work with them how do you size them up 
<laughs> size them up. Uh, well, I first have to ask if they're nuts, <laughs> which happens happens more frequently than you think. But um, you know, in all in all seriousness, um, I get approached for a lot of different reasons. Um, a main part of my focus and my practice and my um, uh, combination of applied kinesiology and some of the more advanced cognitive um, research is to first just ask the athlete what what they're looking for what do they want why are they here and more more often than not um, the more elite athletes know exactly what they need to do some of them just need to learn how to be more confident in some situations some of them need to know how to perform under pressure more often some of them um, just want to set more effective goals and have a better way to measure what they're doing um, you know and then also with coaches and any athletic programs it's how do we how, how can we make ourselves mm -hmm. better and how can we compete to the best of our ability how can we be engaged at a really rich level and if i could just real quick put an asterisk next to that word compete um compete in in our more modern um understanding focuses more on this idea of dominating someone or, or overpowering our opposition which in fact the the original word is to strive together to use one another to be our best. So really focusing that uh, ideology to the landscape and to my practice really changes the entire development of, of athletes. Do you like to work with individuals or teams? Both. Um, a, a majority of my practice is individuals. Awesome. Hey, don't go anywhere. No. We're fascinated. I'm not moving. We're fascinated. <laughs> Coach Jay's got questions, but we got to take a we break. We got a break. We got a break. Million dollar right. question about take, confidence when we come it. back. We're yeah. Oh, do that. All right. All right. This is Erica Salda, the Queen of Team. We'll be back with more after these messages. We are back, and this is the Santa Barbara Team Sports Radio Show. I am your host, Erica Salda, the Queen of Team. Please tune in every single Tuesday at 9 a.m. And go today. Yes, we are also we? on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, uh, uh, Teen Sports Radio. Dot com. <laughs> Better. Go. That was good. Better. We haven't and talked that, about. We have almond milk digestion. Right. The, That's like, it. And these yeah, like no, cocoa no. balls we have in cocoa here too. Balls. Unbelievable. You know, I brought cocoa date nut balls. How many do we have left? Oh, I'm gonna grab one. No, please. You have no idea. Date balls are mine. Oh. <laughs> I, I want a shack balls. one. I know because I, I helped roll some of these, and the shack ones are gone. I have to take me a little mini. All right, there you go. Help yourself. All right, oh, here we go. Hilarious. Date ball in the house. Like they're, they're unbelievable. They they're they're unbelievable. Oh, you can't is, is this increase required, your confidence. Uh, uh -huh. All right, increase your confidence. <laughs> See? Exactly. So you feel more confident right now? It's got a That's cricket amazing. in it. No. I'm just kidding. You just took, <laughs> you just took some PD. That's what the crunch was. <laughs> protein, baby. That's protein. That's a crunch. Gluten free PD. PED right there. Mm, yeah, That's a gluten-free PED. Coach Dane, you yeah. had a question. Now I'm going to have to work out after this. <laughs> no, you're done. Now you feel more confident? Yeah. Oh, much yeah. more. I miss my Pez. Yeah. All right, well, we're going to say, we're going to go to you, Coach Dane, oh but Dominique, yeah. what's your website? Because you have the recipe uh, of these date balls on your website. I do. My website is DominiqueHackettCHC.com. Awesome. Right. You could also go on Team Sports Radio and flash on about us and she's there and you just click it and get it that way also coach jane so, what's the question so we had a question on confidence you get this all the time right with my athletes and just make me confident i'm losing confidence i don't have confidence talk to us about the the relationship between confidence and results confidence and results wow again a really good question thank a you a big question it's a huge question um well so I'll, I'll try to unpack this from from my understanding and do you believe that you do you believe that confidence has to be attached to positive results. Mm. Mm. That's another deep question, right? Woo! Yeah, Two good yeah, it is. Row. It is. I, I'm already, I'm already feeling a follow up right. session. So <laughs> I'll, see, I'll see you next week. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, so uh, again, I want to take a few steps back on that because the idea of confidence is like it's a tangible product or it's a tangible personality that can be fixed and from what i've seen in my practice and the athletes i work with is that confidence is very much an up and down fluid always um in flux uh experience so there's times where you feel more confident and 
you know, unfortunately, because I don't know whether it's the larger landscape of sports, whether that's just the cultural norm for, for the states, but positive results are associated with confidence. And with the way self-belief and self-efficacy goes, that's the number one determinant of how you feel in your next performance. If your last one was bad, I'm not feeling too hot going into this next one. If the last one was good, I'm feeling on fire. Give me the rock. Um, But in terms of the individual athlete, the way that athletes are trained and the way that they experience their uh, sport at a very young age, unfortunately, there tends to be this foreclosure of of their identity attached to their performance, right? You see them get rewards, parents take them out to dinner, or the coach gives them special praise after they score a goal or after they win the match. And that's just really reinforcing that, hey, if I do this, if I do well at this, I'm going to get praise. I'm going to feel good about myself. Everyone's going to like me. So, Taking that into consideration, which again, this is a very big, very big topic, um, that's what makes athletes good and that's where they find their confidence is I'm going to perfect this skill. I'm going to perf- perfect um, this, tr- this craft to have that success, to have that acknowledgement, to have that purpose and meaning in what I do. So when that doesn't happen, that's where you see a lot of the disappointments. You see a lot of this just rash behavior of how is a pro athlete doing that? Right. Um, or, or any athlete, how, is, how are they responding like that? For instance, uh, Cameroon teammates headbutting each other last right. week. That's a pretty emotional response at, uh, on the world stage. And if I'm a sports psych with that team, I'm going nuts over that because that's so much material to work with. Um, so in terms of confidence, that was a very lack of confidence moment um, because of what was happening in the situation, a negative result. Right. Would you say that when they are in that confident place, uh, we see it many times in many sports, but more specifically basketball, because it's a, a continuous motion uh, sport as opposed to baseball mm. or football. It's just, you know, play and stop and play and stop. Yeah. They get into that place they call the zone mm. that it's this is like the next level even above confidence, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I w- I, I, in my in my understanding of what the zone is and flow is it's this oft elusive experience that is just a byproduct of an athlete being able to sincerely and genuinely express themselves in their performance. Every time an athlete steps onto the court, um, you know, it's a very vulnerable moment for them. They are performing, they're expressing their effort, their um, motivation, their uh, ups and downs. And so if we take a look at that and really unpack Again, why an athlete is doing what they're doing, really, really being clear about what it is that drives them, what it is that they're motivated about. The question always circles back to what is in your control and what is not in your control. And we want to be very, very, very clear on what is in our control so we can invest in that and in doing what we can do and only being present in the moment the flow and the um, zone is just a byproduct of that. When you start to make it an object of itself, you're never going to get there. And it's going to be like finding the validation and winning or a positive result. That's all your performance becomes. And it stops becoming a performance and just starts becoming replication. So Mike, can you give us an example? Because of course I did my homework and looked at your great website and you mentioned working with the, some of the Santa Barbara athletes, for example, at Westmont. Mm -hmm. So can you give us applications to what you're speaking of as it pertains to working with the Westmont athletes that you work with? Yeah, so uh, I was I was very fortunate to work with their programs, um, great programs, great coaching staff, uh, wonderful athletes, and in terms of the collegiate population, that's a whole another area in of itself because they're going to school full time, they're on their own, they're not quite adults, um, so they still have this uh, parental supervision. They have all the rules of the of the school and the program. I mean, you know, it's on every campus. So what they are what they are necessarily looking for in their in my services is to find a balance between what it is they're doing with their sport and what it is they're doing with their life. Um, they're not necessarily there just to go for athletics and go professional. That that is is a lot harder to do than 
go there for school, go there for academics, and you know continue on in the professional world. So those conversations are are oriented more towards who am I? What does it mean to be me? What does it feel like to be me? How how can I set up an environment where I am being true to myself and being able to express myself in a non-judgmental and non-critical way? It's so interesting that hearing your the words you're using, you shifted from doing to being. Mm. And I was really curious when you're working with athletes and confidence, mm. do you ever bring meditation into the picture? Yes, yes. Uh, meditation, uh, that, that word in my field, I have to be very careful with, very sensitive with, because it has a lot of different meanings. It can be visualization, it can be imagery, um, meditation, yeah. So that is a very large component of what I do. Um, it allows athletes to, for, for very different reasons, um, it allows them to be able to recreate moments, prepare for moments, be in control of moments um, because at the end of the day we want these athletes to be able to have an emotional control and a um, uh, a a priority to be again who they are in a moment and not let the moment dictate who they are oh I like that hey Mike I want to I'm going to take a break but I want you to stay for the next segment because we have another athlete coming aboard but why don't you give your contact information real quick yeah, uh, so you can find me at evolvingconcepts.net. My cell phone number is 503-871-7356. And if you go to the website, you'll find my Twitter at Mike Wilson EC, as well as my Facebook page at Facebook slash Evolving Concepts. All right, stick around, all right? Thank you. Yeah. All right, Mike Wilson, thank you very much for being here today. Most definitely. Well, let's take a break right now. We've got Ben Clay in the house. He's going to be joining us after these messages. <laughs> We are back, and this is the Santa Barbara Team Sports Radio Show. I'm your host, Erica Salda, the Queen of Teen. And Dr. Chandler, do you know where we're, where we're at? No. <laughs> Tw- yes. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Yeah. And dot com. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. Awesome. yeah. Dot com. She just threw it out to you. That's, that's what happened. Sh- that's like, she's new, so cute. She's here love smiling. It. Dot com's a new new social platform. That's it. I didn't even know that existed. I like that's it. That's what my husband's friends like to call him for some reason. Nice. Dot com. Dot com. So Aww, it came to so mind. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Andy Gill, who'd you bring? I brought today our big man, Ben Clay. Hey, hey guys. Co- how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> He's a big <laughs> I, yes. I got you an X, and I, I got to see if I could like dig around the garage. I, I'm pretty X. sure this. I, I might stretch it out. All right, I, I like that. <laughs> I think it's a good fit. It's a good I, fit. I hear you got to put a big S on the chest, no? Uh, oh yeah, because you're Superman. you're the guy that's going to make it happen, no? Yeah. All right. So kind of kind of touching base on what Mike was talking about a little bit ago. So my uh, Ben last year was on the freshman team. Freshman team didn't get many minutes. Big body, ton of potential. Tried him out in the summer, sophomore a year between freshman and sophomore year, just grew whatever for whatever reason <laughs> wasn't 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 working with the freshman coach. Um, we saw his potential, kind of gave him an opportunity, and he just started dominating, started hitting people with elbows, getting boards, <laughs> getting buckets. So we're like, all right, let's try him out on varsity. Um, had a really good year as a sophomore, limited minutes, but um, this upcoming year, it, it's all about Ben Clay. Um, nice. We're gonna need him to be successful for us to be successful. And um, good thing about Ben, though, is that he's always smiling, good kid, easy to work with, and uh, willing to learn, L- willing to learn and get better. And uh, w- one of the things that we promote, and I-, I think Ben can vouch, is that there's a lot of freedom on our team. We, we play to your strengths, and um, we're telling Ben, all right, get to the block, do what you do, <laughs> and uh, keep shooting. Yeah. And, and touching back with Mike, um, if it's not going in the first time, it's not going in the tenth time, Keep shooting. They're going to start falling. And, and in sports, um, that one shot can make a, make a huge difference. And now we're, now we're going back to confidence. Five, six in a row. Next thing you know, Ben's the MVP. <laughs> so uh, so um, other than that, uh, how's your experience been with, with, with Santa Barbara High School basketball? And, and what, it, what are you trying to do this year? I love it. It's been my best three years or two years of high school so far. I've tried my hardest to be where I'm at right now, but I'm still trying to get better on and off the court, in the gym, 
and I love my coaches. They're great coaches. They're <laughs> you don't have to say that, man. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, the no they're that. great coaches. <laughs> I was even talking to you, uh, to our other guests earlier today, and how you guys do let us do what we need to do, shoot, and you guys are very um, courage, encouraging on what we need to do. It's not how you say it. It's like what you're like telling tell us, and that's what we need to take to heart when we're in the game. Us, and it's just very easy to get along with you guys. You guys are very easy to talk to, and you guys are like old brothers. So, what, what was your mindset in as a freshman coming in, and and tell us about the evolution <laughs> of how you think of the game? Uh, my mindset. Let me see. I was cut from the sixth grade team, and I didn't want to play basketball for them. And then. Let's fast forward two years. I played at Powell, and then that was that was actually two years I actually played on team. And then seventh, uh, my freshman year, they actually gave me another chance to play on the team. I was very excited. I uh, at the end of my freshman year, I didn't think I was going to make the JV squad because I didn't think I had enough confidence in how I was playing. But they gave me another opportunity, the biggest one of my life, I believe, right now, one of them, to play on varsity. And I gave it my all, and I tried to show them what I could do with the time that they gave me, and I hope I impressed them. <laughs> <laughs> and you did. <laughs> <laughs> and you did. Every, every year is different. Every coach is different. And uh, as long as you continue to understand that, you can't control other people. You can only control yourself. That's true. So as long as you keep working hard, good things are going to happen. Um, but, yeah. Um, I, I did have a question and I just forgot it. <laughs> well, that's all right. I'll cut yeah. it. You can remember. Right? Yeah. Coming, coming into your junior year, it's just kind of like that that evolution, right? Going from freshman, there's nothing to lose. Sophomore, I'm on varsity. It's kind of like just <laughs> nothing to lose, right? Yeah. Now it's junior time. Where, where's your Where's your future picture looking like? I want to beat the team that we beat last year. Uh, that we we had a great team last year. We went very far in CIF and also state. I want to go farther. I want to get a CIF championship this year. I want to go to state as far as I can. Hopefully win state. I just want to get there and win. That's all my mindset is to win and work hard and get there. <laughs> you agree? <laughs> <All in. laughs> so uh, so personally, like personally, the things that you can control about yourself, right? Your work ethic, certain skill sets. What do you what do you see that you need to improve? And like, what do you see that in order because 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 coach said look it's it's on you mm -hmm. right so what do you have to bring to this team to put them on your back i would say i have to bring everything um that's a lot <laughs> <laughs> he just said everything we're done <laughs> no, like, show. i gotta bring my like mindset i have to when everybody's down i gotta bring the team up when uh things are going well we gotta keep doing what we need to do and do it well also, I got to work hard on my own game, so it, it makes it easier for my team to score or execute the offense. Yeah. If I'm taking off two players from the team, that means there's only three players left that's guarding four people. That helps us get easy buckets, and it helps us win. Another thing, I need to be better on defense, not foul like I did this last weekend. <laughs> yeah, he's a out. hacker. <laughs> but I, I, in my defense, <laughs> yeah. I had, those were all clean blocks. They just <laughs> <laughs> they're all clean. The ref just yeah. didn't like me. I felt. <laughs> what uh, what I what I can say, I think Ben's biggest strength is his communication. Um, he's always chatting, always talking, um, always uplifting people, <laughs> and uh. Him talking, it's other people talking. And uh, and then the communication is there between the, the players and the coaches, and then it just makes it just makes our jobs easier. Honestly, as soon as you started expressing yourself for the li listener's sake, you look like a man. Yeah. <laughs> you talk like a man, and you look like a man. When you say, I'm going to, yeah. you know, and pronounce it, you know, like that's going to be your journey. And then that, uh, that was going to be my next question on defense, because, yeah, that's where you get really um, – you know, demonstrative in your body, co controlling your body and your, you know, how you handle when mm. you block a shot. Yeah. You know, because then it becomes a finesse game. I know because <laughs> I helped Erica coach basketball, so I kind of know it. Oh, I got to talk to Erica. Yeah, Erica can tell us. She, she might be <laughs> offering up some suggestions. <laughs> All right, now. I'm just saying. <laughs> just saying. All right, you know, we got Juju Stone coming back. All right, so we'll just be talking then. All right, All right. so we'll just see. Hey, He's going to have his camp. He's going to have his camp here this, in the next couple of weeks. He's here. Yeah. So I'm serious. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Next time you see Juju, uh, ask him how many points I scored on him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, oh, no, no. Me, me and Juju grew up at the Galita Boys and Girls Club oh, together. So. Every, anybody who's a kid who's played basketball has ended up at the Galita Boys and Girls Club. <laughs> That's true. Hey, Friday nights you can end up at the Galita Boys and Girls Club because... I have the keys and the door is open. Right, Thank sweet. you, Sal Rodriguez. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, Wendy, you had a question. Yeah, I can't wait for you to meet Juju. Have you met him? Oh, uh, have I? He, he was, he was, seen, he's been to a couple games. Yeah, oh, he was okay. hilarious the first time he came out to the radio show, and he had his mom here, <laughs> and he was so humble and, you know, so homespun. Mm-hmm. And then the next year he comes back from Denver, and he's like <laughs> copitude. Yeah, Coppitude. He had the biggest pro attitude. <laughs> you can't even touch him now. Yeah, so it. we'll see if his mom got him calmed back down. But, uh, you know, he needs to keep coming home. So he got to keep on for. paying his parking tickets. That's why he kept oh. on getting those parking tickets. That's right. Then he's like, yeah, but using my money, <laughs> put mama back down. I'm like, oh, but I know mama real well. So we know what happened when we got home. <laughs> That's it. Hey, we got a minute left. Um, I want to, I really hope, I, I don't even hope Andy you've done such a great job over at Santa Barbara High School thank you, thank you. so it's going to be a, a good good journey for you so um, let me thank real quick Dominique Coach Dominique Coach Dane doctor, my foot doctor at, uh, Dr. Chandler <laughs> you know she looks at me she's so cute uh, we got Wendy Foster and we had another great guest here Mike Wilson um, that's all for right now God bless Santa Barbara God bless you all if anybody wants to get out uh, put $100 towards a nonprofit. Uh, give my web guy a call. We'd love to raise money for Santa Barbara. All right, see you next week. Please tune in and join us next Tuesday at KZSB AM 1290 at 9.06 AM when we will go behind the scenes with the local students, athletes, coaches, parents, volunteers, and all other teen sports supporters. This is all brought to you by ePro Insurance Agency, leader in gift planning and wealth preservation since 1983. So please follow along and support our student athletes by reading the Santa Barbara News Press and then join me Erica Salda, the Queen of Teen, Dr. Dugan, my co-host, friends, teens, every week on the Santa Barbara News Press radio station. You're the best, oh, wow, oh, wow.